Dr. Donald DeFabio, and welcome to The Natural Way to Better Health and Wellness. Well, we have with us today a repeat. Yes, it's a repeat guest, a guest that was really very well respected and all about pain and inflammation. Dave Seaman, Dr. Seaman, thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me, Dave. Our previous show, Deflame, was a huge hit, so thank oh, you for good. coming. Uh, I'm glad you took a little time from the convention. We're at a uh, chiropractic symposium, and you're one of the speakers again, so mm -hmm. I will be running you down uh, okay. at, the, at the symposiums here in New Jersey because uh, it's just great information. Really, your thing is pain and inflammation and nutrition. Tell us how that fits into a natural paradigm. Well, when I um, go back to when I first got interested in this, I was a year or two into practice. And I took a... Uh, a uh, so you've only been out about four years, Dave. I've been out about five. We went to school <laughs> together, so you were a year behind me. So behind this is you. only two years of two research, year, two right? Two years in, yeah. Actually, we, I graduated in 86, so that's yeah, you know, 20, it's, and you're 85. It's a few years ago. Long, yeah. long time ago. We're old. Um, about two years into practice, I, I went back to, uh, to NYCC and took a postgrad course. And uh, Dr. Barry Wyke, a British uh, neuroscientist, okay. was, was, was teaching the program. And he was uh, researching how manual care, manipulation, massage, influence the nervous system. And when he was going over the, uh, the, the, the neurology of pain, he talked about, about mechanical irritants. So bad posture, of course, can be painful. Oh, that's why we're sitting so in these, funky, sitting these chairs funky chairs, yeah, to keep good posture right, so good going. Good posture to unload mechanically our musculoskeletal tissues. And he talked about chemistry also, and the chemistry he talked about were things like um, prostaglandins. Now, although your audience may not know what a prostaglandin is, they uh, regularly take medications to reduce prostaglandin production, and those like would be uh, your over-the-counter NSAIDs, Advil. Uh, Tylenol. Uh, Tylenol is, is, is as, as well, yeah. And then your Celebrex and Vioxx and those, they're called selective COX-2 inhibitors. Got it. Uh, okay. even, for, even patients who have ulcerative colitis are taking medications commonly called mesalamine. And those are non-absorbable uh, inhibitors of the enzyme that creates PGE2. So when I first took this prostaglandin E2 called PGE2 for short. So when, when, when I was taking Dr. Weick's class, I, I saw these chemicals. He listed about seven different chemicals. This was back in 87 or so. Um, listed these, these different chemicals, and I was busy taking and finishing up a master's degree at that point, trying to figure out a research paper to work on. And I looked at the different chemicals, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, wow, all these chemicals are related to food, particularly your really? prostaglandins. Yeah, particularly your prostaglandins. And he talked histamine as well, although that's not so much. But, but prostaglandins were the big one. And as I mentioned a few, a few moments ago, that the medications used to inhibit prostaglandins are your NSAIDs, Tylenol, Celebrex. If you backtrack that to what they're actually inhibiting, they're inhibiting the conversion of a fatty acid that we can only get from diet huh. into this pain-producing chemical. So 20 years ago, I sat there like dumbfounded listening to him and then looking back at this and then running back to, 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 to my books and coming and talking to him the next day. It just dawned on me that we eat ourselves into an inflamed and painful state. Really? So our diet's a huge problem then. Huge. So how do we get away from pain? with our diet. Running from pain, I, I call, the best way to avoid pain is to stop them doing what I call the, the drive-by self-shooting lifestyle. <laughs> All right. Now, if you live in Manhattan, you do walk-bys. All right. But but when we're in the when we're in the burbs, we do drive-bys. Those are like drive-through. Drive-through, yeah. And, all and all the different fast food restaurants. If right. you look, if if you watch the movie Super Size Me, he did sure. walk he did walk-bys mm -hmm. because because he was living. Is in it Manhattan. that simple? Is it just fast food? Is it it's, that simple? Well, well, it it the components of fast food, which if, are what? What are the bad components to avoid? And then we can talk about what to put in. Well, let's talk about what's not in fast food for a moment. Well, then it's the same thing. Yeah. Then. So so we'll, we'll we'll do it in terms of like the good food that really should be okay. there. So they're lean meat. Is not there. All right. The meat is semi suspect if you look at, if you watch movies like, say, Food Inc. So, lean meat, mm -hmm. uh, the fish that is not deep fried, okay. chicken that is deep fried. You want, basically, you want lean meat, skinless chicken, and all fish are fine except for farm raised tilapia and farm raised catfish. Right. They have been found to have higher than appropriate levels of the fat that becomes the prostaglandin that the drugs inhibit. Which gives you inflammation. Which gives you inflammation. So you have to look at it like this, gang. You have to have, here's your fatty acid. It's called arachidonic acid. You can Google it. Arachidonic acid is here. We eat it. This enzyme 
converts it into painful pain producing PGE2, inflammation producing PGE2. And so the drugs block the conversion. Even herbs like ginger and turmeric help oh. to block the conversion. All right. The problem though is too much of the precursor of the prostaglandin. Got it. So we eat, so foods like lean meat, low levels of arachidonic acid. Skinless chicken, chicken breast, low levels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All fish except for tilapia, catfish, farm-raised tilapia and catfish, uh, or have fine levels of, okay. or, or don't have levels of the arachidonic acid. So that's, those are your animal products. Vegetables, fruits, and then nuts. Those right. four foods, basically lean healthy animal products, vegetables, fruits, and nuts. Those are the foods that have very low levels of that arachidonic acid. Right. Those, those, those nutrient sources are not found in fast food restaurants. All right. So they're not found there. So when we do a drive-by, we're basically just driving by and, 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 and we flame ourselves up with every bite we take. And the more calories we take in, the higher the sugar after we eat, the postprandial mm -hmm. glycemia. Mm -hmm. post so that post means after we eat, sugar rises up. After we eat, blood lipids or fats rises up. The greater the rise, the greater the production of free radicals and ensuing inflammation immediately after consumption. Wow. Yeah, so if we eat a sal a chicken Caesar salad with no croutons and olive oil as opposed to the heavy duty, you know, uh, Caesar salad dressing, mm -hmm. you don't flame up. Immediately after you eat. Immediately after. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. So all right, so now we gotta look at our foods. We're gonna take a short break. Okay. And then when we come back, let's talk about how we can be a little bit more proactive in, in keeping the inflammation down uh, with other other avenues, whether it's supplementation or herbs, maybe. Okay. Okay, because you're touching the ginger. That was good. Sure. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio, and we'll be right back with Dr. Seaman and get you out of pain naturally. Ian Cuts, you're here representing the isotherm unit. Tell us a little bit about the isotherm unit, Ian. Uh, well, Dr. DeFabio, isotherm is a thermal grill. So effectively, you have hot and cold temperature converging in one point. So if somebody has a chronic pain, in their thumb or finger, hand, foot, or some other area where you can get a local uh, access with this type of device. The hot and the cold together, provided there's a difference of about 20 degrees Celsius, which I think is something like about nearly 40 degrees of centigrade, of Fahrenheit, sorry, that seems to stop pain reception. So using this device for maybe five to 10 minutes, 15 minutes can give 10 or more hours of pain relief. It's safe, it's effective, it's easy to use. It's the sort of thing that you can buy and have in the cupboard and use it when you need it. And it's another way of coming at chronic pain which seems to affect something like one in three adults in this country. Welcome back. Uh, Dr. Seaman, really good information about the drive-by. I love that. Um, now, you mentioned nuts. I mean, I say nuts to my patients. I go, oh, they're kind of fatty. and But, you know, I eat the dry roasted peanuts. They're better, aren't they? What's the deal with nuts? Okay. First of all, gang, peanuts aren't nuts. Peanuts are legumes. That's a bean. That's a bean. All right. So, soy, so what? Beans are good for you. So soybeans and peanuts are legumes. Uh, when it comes to grains and legumes, there is a, a, a glycoprotein component called lect, uh, they're, well they're called lectins. Each okay. has their own unique lectin. Right. And too much of the lectins from grains and legumes can potentiate gut inflammation. Oh really? Yeah, it's been fairly well studied actually. Yeah, It can, it, it can increase the colonization, the, the lectins can potentiate E. coli con colonization, not so that you're going to have septicemia and die or anything, but mm -hmm. it just potentiates an unhealthy It raises that inflammation level. It raises again. the inflammation level. So, those, so, so avoid Grains right. and legumes as staples. A little bit here and there, no big deal. But as staples are a smart thing. So peanuts are not considered nuts. Got it. So all the other all the other nuts that we know of, there they are our nuts, and they are high in fat. Mm -hmm. However, everyone everyone watching is going to probably say, well, you know, olive oil is high in fat because that's what it is. It's an oil. But we all know olive oil is good. EVO baby. Right. Olive oil is one extra right. yeah. extra virgin olive oil. Uh, so, so olive oil is wonderful. So we think, okay, so we have to stay, keep that in our mind and then apply that to nuts. And if, you, and if people were, were, were to say, yes, I love my olive oil, 
what can I do to eat olive oil in nut form? And the answer is macadamia nuts. Really? If you look at the fatty acid breakdown of, of, of macadamia nuts and olive oil, it's almost, they're identical, it's just that nuts are a solid version of macadamia, which means they got more protein. Now, what about roasted, though? Uh, can you roast, ma I, I, it's, it's unusual for me to see raw macadamias in the store. I mean, maybe you can get them where you are. I don't see them that often. Uh, I can get them in certain specialty can health you? food stores. So you have to look for raw macadamias as opposed to roasted. Are there Trader Joe's up here? Yeah, we got them around here. I think yeah. you can get raw macadamia nuts in Trader okay. Joe's. Right. They're, they are findable. Right. Now, if, if you can't get raw, Dry roasted, it's, it's not a big deal. Okay. I would just not get the nuts that are roasted in oil. Because <laughs> the oils that they're roasted in okay. are the oils that become the arachidonic acid that becomes pain. It gives you inflammation. Yeah. Got it. So you'll see if you look at the, the, the raw nuts or the dry roasted nuts versus the ones that are roasted in oil, there's three to four grams additional fat per serving, mm -hmm. and that's the oil that the nuts were roasted in. And it's always the, you know, the omega-6 oils, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. are the inflammatory oils. Oils. Mm -hmm. okay. So we really, we really want to avoid those guys. Mm -hmm. That's right. the real problem. So now, you mentioned the uh, omega-6 oils. Um, those are the bad guys. Those are the arachidonic ones. Uh, well, the, 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 the omega-6 oils would be, uh, it's called linoleic acid, okay. which, which comes from the, the, uh, the seed sources. So corn oil, safflower, sunflower, cottonseed oil, when you see those, think inflammation. So you want to stay away from that? want to stay away from those. What about now, corn chips? Corn chips, it depends how much oil. If, if they're baked or fried? B baked without oil, no problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you think about... Uh, so uh, corn itself is okay. It's just when they extract when out they the When they extract oil. out the oil, yeah, yeah. Corn itself, you have to have, like, it, it, var it varies depending upon the corn, but a tablespoon of corn oil, you're talking between 8, 10, 15 cups of corn to get that small amount of oil. Okay. So no one eats sure, that's a lot know, of corn. 15 cups, it's like 15, unless you're at a corn eating contest at a state fair someplace. So people should enjoy corn on the cob, absolutely, mm -hmm. but avoid the oil, Got it. that's the problem. What about butter? Butter's fine. In fact, butter actually has very, very low levels of the, those omega-6s. Mm -hmm. The ratio is about four to one uh, on average, and, 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 our, and our goal is, is, is to keep our omega-6s lower Omega-3 is higher. You need them both. The problem, though, is the drive-by diet has too much 6, not enough 3. Right. 3, you get in green vegetables. Omega-3 in green vegetables, as well as uh, your, well, wild game. Okay. Kind of hard to get. Eh, I guess parts of Jersey, you can still get wild uh, deer running mm -hmm. around. So they're, they're typically past year. They're, 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 they're foliage. Uh, fed or grass-fed grass meat. Grass-fed meat, absolutely. Grass -fed meat, which we can get in the stores around yeah, here. Perfect, and then and, and then all your fish except for farm-raised tilapia mm -hmm. and farm-raised catfish. Well, last time we talked, you weren't a big fan of Atlantic salmon. Yeah, well, I've, a paper was published in 2008, and they looked at Atlantic salmon, Pacific salmon. They looked at uh, all of the various. They looked at probably about 30 different fish, mm -hmm. and the only ones that they found that had high levels of the arachidonic acid were farm-raised tilapia, farm-raised catfish, and uh, a Mediterranean sea bass called bronzini, bronzini yeah. that's also farm-raised. Yeah, so they're actually, we're just eating fish food. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it gets down to. Yeah. Uh, other good sources of omega-3s? Well, green vegetables, uh, wild game, uh, three seeds. Uh, green vegetables, wild game, uh, anything that's grass-fed. Okay and f all, all the fish except for the three we mm -hmm, mentioned. So, mm -hmm. so all those foods are good sources of omega-3 mm -hmm. and three seeds. Hemp seed, chia seed, and flax seed. Okay. Now, um, those should all be freshly ground, correct? They can be freshly ground or they can be soaked and they can be added into, uh, they can be uh, ad ad added to whatever one's making. You know, whatever but as opposed dish, to whatever. buying the ground seeds in the store, because those oils are relatively yeah, volatile, Yeah, you want to buy the, the seeds whole. Actually, hulled hemp seeds mm -hmm. are excellent. Right. You, you can buy hulled hemp seeds, you can put them right on to, uh, they're great on vegetables, great on salad. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks, for the cook. Thanks for the cooking mm -hmm. tip. We're going to have to make some recipes next. Uh, we're going to take another quick break and uh, we'll be back with Dr. David Seaman. We're going to talk about boosting the immune system next, naturally. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio. Today's chiropractic tip, headaches. To treat the underlying cause of your headaches, chiropractic may be just what the doctor ordered. A Duke University study showed that 83.7% of headaches respond to drugless natural chiropractic care. So to treat the underlying cause of your headaches, have an examination by your local doctor of chiropractic to see if they can help. 
I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio, reminding you that chiropractic is more than just back pain. Welcome back, and it's all about feeling better and staying less inflamed and out of pain. Uh, Dr. David Seaman, what about boosting immunity? If we eat a lot of omega-3s, will that help our immunity? That's really an, an, an excellent choice of, of words when it comes to the immune system because right now it's dark out, right? The clouds have rolled in. The, to get your flu shots are... Oh, yeah. Are, 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 That's the only way to stay healthy, yeah, right? Yeah. Is, is to get a, yeah. take, take a shot of something that hasn't even been tested and the FDA approved it. Yet they're given, uh, and everybody else has to go through two years of clinical tests. The vaccine gets approved without any testing at all. Well, but it's healthy for you. Well, you see that you know, we get, it's, 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 it's flu vaccine, uh, it's flu shot time now. Uh, because we're entering that season, and 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 if we we look at so essentially starting from you know mid end of October up in the northeast, up in the northern half of the states, it gets kind of dark mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of cloud cover, and there are three or four really good papers that have been published, and and for, and, and for the the listening audience or the watching audience, I would suggest that you get onto uh, the your internet and go to a website or just Google uh, the Vitamin D Council. Vitamin D Council, right. and you can sign up for a Vitamin D newsletter. Wow. The, the 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 executive director, uh, Dr. Uh, John Cannell, he's he's very well very very well published. I read his book, his uh, most recent yeah. article. It was amazing. He, he works with all the the top vitamin D researchers in the country, and what they've come up with, they've looked at vitamin D levels over seasonal changes. Because if, if you think about, because we're obviously we're we're in Jersey, we have Jersey Shore. It's interesting, actually. The Jersey Shore, they, they don't say the Florida Shore. or, or the, the, Just you know, here. It's just, just, just here. We're going to the shore. And what exit? <laughs> you know, that's just, welcome to Jersey. That's the way it is. I what exit? It. Let's go to the shore. So so, so, so uh, I used to go to the shore, too. I used to just love to just grab those two or three months of sun. And that was pretty much the, 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 the sole amount of time we, we have for full body sun exposure, June, July, August, maybe a little bit of September. Mm -hmm. so, so, so sun exposure is important to get vitamin D levels up. Yeah, well, well how does that relate to omega-3s? Well, that's actually different from omega-3s. Okay. So if you're talking about immunity, uh, the, a key driver of appropriate immune expression, mm -hmm. and that is we need, we, we need enough immune activity to fight off invaders, so but if we have sick. too much right. of, a, of an overexcited immune system, then an overexcited immune system makes us sick. An example would be rheumatoid arthritis. People with rheumatoid d diseases, they have an overactive immune system, which is why they're given immune inhibiting medications. Exactly. So okay. methotrexate, mm -hmm. immune Humera. inhibiting, Humera, yeah. Enbrill, Remicade. Yeah. Uh, those three medications, Enbrill, uh, Humera, and Remicade, they are tumor necrosis factor inhibitors. They're called TNF inhibitors. TNF is released by your immune cells. So, if, so people who take those medications, it'll depress the immune system and, some, and one of the side effects can be infections. So there has to be a balance. We have enough immune activity to fight off infections, but not too much to damage ourselves and make us sick all the time. Got people it. who are cold and fluy and malazy, malazy gang means just feeling unwell, essentially achy, painy, kind of just as, as if you're feeling like you're always coming out of a cold or a flu. That is too much immune activity for the average person. So vitamin D, it, what, it, what it does is it, is, is it enhances the anti-inflammatory function of the immune system okay. and calms down the pro-inflammatory part of the immune system. That's so great. vitamin D is the key. And numbers are bantered about, you'll see, you'll, uh, uh, the, the, the viewing audience will read, 5,000 IUs, 10,000, 20,000. That seems like a lot of IUs. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not really. If the, the, the average person who's watching your show has probably taken vitamin C before. Oh, yeah. And yeah. they've probably taken a 500, 200, 1,000 milligrams. Exactly. Okay. Well, 40,000 IUs of vitamin Whoa. D is one milligram. Oh. So, 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 so 10,000 IUs is a quarter of, is a a quarter of one milligram. 
So don't stress that about 10,000 IU. So uh, a lot of a lot of, uh, of of up to speed MDs are checking vitamin D levels mm -hmm. and they're prescribing 50,000 IU exactly. per week. Exactly, you get 50,000 once a week. I've seen it. Absolutely, but I think that's about seven, six, seven thousand, was seven thousand a day. A day. So that is going to be less than a quarter of a milligram a day. So 50,000 IUs is no problem. Now, Canel and, 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 his, and his research group, they uh, suggest that it, it, that it might not be an inappropriate thing for those who do not have a hypercalcemic state. If you have too much blood calcium, okay. vitamin D should not be taken so, because vitamin D increases calcium absorption. The average person who, who's already had a blood test done by their primary care doc well, they'll be told they have hypercalcemia. Great. And also, if you go in the sunshine and feel wonderful, you're very unlikely to have hypercalcemia because sunshine is going to increase calcium absorption. It'll increase it. vitamin D. So if you're not hypercalcemic, there's no problem whatsoever. So actually, vitamin going in the sunshine is good for your is good for our bones. Got it. Because vitamin D is good for our bones. Okay, so if you go in the sunshine, you feel fine afterwards, feel invigorated, feel better, feel well. Take some vitamin D. Take some vitamin D. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that would be the, 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 the easiest um, empirical way of looking at vitamin D being okay. So uh, for someone to take 10,000 IUs per day, I took 10,000 IUs per day for three years. Right. My, a, a, any side effects or with people are concerned of what happens if I take too much? No, only if you're hypercalcemic. Okay. And so the people who are hypercalcemic are going to be people who have primary hyperparathyroidism, and that is typically found incidentally when one does a blood test. You usually see high calcium. The calcium runs about 8.5 to 5 to 10.5. You hit 10, 6, 10, 7, 11, then you have it. Then you're suspicious for okay. for, for 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 primary hyperparathyroidism. That's about 90% of all people who have high calcium. People who have certain cancers. Uh, multiple myelomas, uh, and then various cancers can do it as well. You know, your, your, your osteolytic cancers, the ones that break down bone. So lymphomas can be a problem too. I mean, I would check for all cancers just to see what the calcium is. So you have, you have, you have parathyroidism, certain cancers, uh, sarcoidosis, granulomatous diseases. They, okay. they actually, the, 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 the granuloma area increases vitamin D production. So there's a couple of couple caveats. Of things. Hyperthyroidism. A, a routine blood test and a physical will weed them out. Weed so them most out people easily. can be, can be very safe. Absolutely. Well, right. well, well in, in most cases, if you look at the recommendation by the vitamin D council, it's just take vitamin D, take 10,000. Because 10,000 IUs of vitamin D, 10,000 IUs is about 20 minutes at noon, midday in New Jersey, in the, at the shore, in a bathing suit. There you go. So. Dr. Seaman, we're going to take a quick break. Okay. When we come back, you'll give everybody your contact information, okay. and uh, we'll wrap it up. Uh, great show. We're going to teach you how to stay well and stay deflamed. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio. Well, welcome back to the show, and uh, we're going to be wrapping up with Dr. David Seaman, who's been going over lots of good tips about deflaming and boosting the immunity. Uh, doctor, if people have any questions about deflaming, how can they get more information? Well, first, deflaming, of course, means reducing inflammation. Just okay. some, 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 because we didn't really mention that before, and some of the folks might not get what that what, what, what that term means. So, deflame as opposed to inflame. Very simple. Deflame, D-E, flame, F-L-A-M-E dot com. Right. And all the information is there. I've got a ten-page deflaming guideline. I have uh, two MP3s that can be listened to. Nice. Tons and tons of information. Uh, we also sell supplements on our website, and we give directions. To uh, to, to supplement companies that are sold at stores in case they don't want to get them from us. So no Excellent. one's held hostage at, at all. We appreciate that. Well, thank you very much. Now, uh, we want to empower our patients with some take-home tips. We talked about the vitamin D. Um, we talked about the good fats and the bad fats. Any other tips you have for them to, to stay healthy? Yes. You know? Yeah, there's a great one. And that is uh, only one day a week, you know, dive into the inflammatory foods, I think. People who want to do it, no problem. One day a week is, 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 is reasonable. And go out from the home and do it. Don't bring the inflammation into the house. There you go. Keep like the that. house deflamed. And when it's time to go flame up, leave the house, flame up, leave your house clean and anti-inflammatory. Now, ginger, you mentioned at the very beginning of the show, is an anti-inflammatory. Does that have any immune effects as well, or is it strictly because it keeps inflammation down? Well, if you think of it like this, once again, uh, um, immune expression mm -hmm. is going to be an inflammatory expression. Okay. So, so, so people who get colds and flus regularly, 
their immune system is typically overactive. So reducing inflammation will reduce an overactive immune system. Which is, and so ginger plays a role in reducing inflammation. Turmeric does too. Uh, in, in, the, in the last 10 years, multiple what are called signaling molecules have been discovered. And all your various herbs, so if you, so if you think of all the different herbs that, that make Asian food tasty to us, uh, Indian food, Italian, Greek, Hispanic foods, all of those herbs have been shown to have anti-inflammatory, therefore immune benef benefiting factors as long as we can avoid the flowers. So we're, so we're gonna have a spicy Hispanic meal with small amounts of rice, small amounts of... of so of, rice is a grain again, so it's yeah, not just so, the wheat. So small right. amounts, yeah, okay. yeah. And not too many tortillas. Not too many tortillas. Yeah. Just yeah, a little one's bit. One's okay. One's okay, there you yeah. go, there you go. What about antioxidants? Are they important for people to include in their diet? Well, antioxidants really are your fruits and your vegetables. Those are the most important ones. I personally don't think that we need to be spending a lot of money on vitamins E and C. I think a multi is good. Uh, and then vitamin D has antioxidant benefits. Okay. All the, the herbs and spices have antioxidant benefits. Magnesium has antioxidant benefits. Fruits and vegetables themselves are the best sources of antioxidants. And then the biggest antioxidant is eating less calories. Really? Yeah, because if we overeat, we have high blood sugar immediately after eating, so the higher blood, the post eating blood sugar rise, fat rise, causes immediate free radical production. So it makes no sense to do drive-bys and then take vitamin C. It does, doesn't have any effect. Really. So I, I know uh, in the bodybuilding world, they're eating six, eight times a day to keep their metabolism going, keep their blood sugar level. That's just a really good, healthy recommendation yeah. for everybody, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah just yeah. to stay level. Very reasonable. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of your travel a lot, you move around. I mean, you're giving a lecture today, and we really appreciate your time. Are you able to stay on a healthy, deflame, anti-inflammatory lifestyle, is that available when you're on the road? Oh, absolutely. It's also easy to fall off it if you're not careful. But at airports, you can choose vegetables, fruits, you can get fish, chicken breast. You have many, many options uh, when you're on the road. Is it, hard? is it hard to do? No, I weigh what I weighed when I met you 20-some years ago. It, and, you know, why so are people you. so resistant to change? Because that's our human nature. That's a deep philosophical question that I don't have time to deal with today. All right, we're that's just human that. change is hard. Yeah. 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 But and we also become foods addicted. are gratifying yeah, too. Yeah, gratifying. Things about the birthday cake yeah. and the celebrations about here's a cake and here's, right. you know, Valentine's Day, here's the chocolates. Right. Although dark chocolate. Dark okay. chocolate's good, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Last time we talked, it was 100 grams a day. Is still that okay? Uh, I don't know if 100 grams so much. I think about 50 to 100 calories per day is a good idea. 50 to 100 idea. calories. Yeah. Dark chocolate, yeah. 60% or more cacao. I think 70 or higher. I go, I go 85 higher. myself. Okay, so yeah. you want less sugar. Less sugar. Less sugar of fat. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, David, thank you very much. Thanks it was for great. Me, Always a lot of fun. And we look forward to seeing you next time you come up great. to Jersey. Or I'll come down. We'll go surfing okay. down in uh, All Daytona right. All already. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio. Thanks a lot for your time today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on our next show. Have a great day. Someone would be considering chiropractic care. It would certainly behoove them to to at least check it out. Um, go go find a quality doctor or like Dr. DeFabio. It's worth giving it a shot. It's 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 a far better uh, uh, experiment, if you will, than taking a, a painkiller. An office like Dr. Dr. DeFabio's is unique, in my opinion. I've been to several different chiropractors before coming here, and um, his office, besides doing the general chiropractic, um, he does uh, the equivalent of what I consider to be uh, a physical um, uh, therapy, and he has the laser treatments, which I've I've had the benefit of, and, and it's incredible how much you don't you don't feel anything when the laser's being applied to you, but when you walk off that table, you feel uh, you know a ton better than you did before you before you took it. And uh, he also offers uh, assistance in uh, orthotics, which uh, is is tremendous. Um, I, I've been wearing orthotics since 1974, and, and can't run a mile without them.